G'day everybody, where's Wally here? Well, last week, Dell he had a look at my towing tanks and he decided to rubbish the whole towing tank proof as just a citation and nothing measurable. Horizontal skyscrapers, parallel downward vectors and towing tanks. I had, I came back yesterday, Sunday, I had been away on Saturday, I came back on Sunday and there had been an influx of absolute ignorant morons on my channel talking about this Wally called Where's Wally? who has cherry picked and found some text professing that um, there's things called towing tanks where they can see how ships perform in any given conditions that are built quite large so we've got bodies of water where the vessel's towed along and they can create waves and, and turbulence and whatever else to, to see how the things perform in any given conditions. Now these morons have found a statement that says that the building in the water follows the curve of the earth. You know, again, no direct measure, no practical reference, just cherry picked words that suits their bias. Okay then. Look, I realised right away back when Dell had set up this challenge to show the curve of the earth upon a swimming pool or some such small standing body of water, it was always going to be very difficult to get the required precision over the length of a pool, because you're looking at fractions of a millimetre over several metre. So Dell, we do agree that the moving platform of the towing tank has to be exactly parallel to the surface of the water. But I guess what we won't agree on is the shape of the surface of that water underneath the towing tank. So Del, here is a simple way to get outside and make a few measurements that show exactly the shape of the earth and that it is a curve. Are you game, mate? Look at me, mm -hmm. because I'm a skeptic and I ask questions of the things that I've always believed. Okay. And when I tried to prove to myself that the world was a round ball, mm -hmm. I couldn't. Okay. So I had to be honest with myself and go with where it took me. Hey Del, this is fantastic. It sounds like you actually want to work things out for yourself with first-hand experience. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to help you do this for yourself. But there is one caveat. When Ranty did this a couple of months ago, he worked out things all by himself. And look where it led him. Well, to the truth, of course. So let's see if we can help you, Del. If you're game, open your mind. I'm not going to yell and rant at you, but please just watch the rest of the video. Look, even play it on your channel and go through it with your subs. I would love you to do that. And I've also got another video I'm going to link in the description where I went through over three or 4,000 airports worldwide and looked at their GPS data as well. But that's at the end of the video. I'll leave you the link for that one. Okay, all you need is a GPS. Say the one in your phone, it's going to be good enough. You do trust the GPS system, don't you, Del? I mean, it does allow for you to go outside and go to a work site exactly, or get a pizza delivered to your house and not the neighbours. So we're all pretty sure the GPS actually works to define accurately known locations. Oh, and Del, you do also accept that if a GPS or Google Maps say that the north section of the fourth bridge is 3.4 kilometres long, that if you went and drove over it in your car, the odometer would also read exactly 3.4 kilometers. So we all agree that GPS and Google Maps is accurate for the distances between any two locations, yeah, certainly for under 100 kilometers, yes? I'm sure you do. So here is what I did, Del, and I challenge you to replicate this using the same or similar places in your location. So firstly, I chose the 3.5 kilometer north section of the fourth bridge. Now if you grab the GPS coordinates at the start and the finish, you would see that the difference in the longitude doesn't matter because it's north and south. But the difference in the latitude is 0 0.031187 degrees. Now divide the distance of 3.5 kilometers by 0 0.031187 and you get 110.91 kilometers per degree. Okay, cool. Next I chose a 3.34 kilometer east-west section of the A8 at Grand Hill. Again, grab the coordinates at the start and at the end, and this time we look at the difference in the longitudes. 
we get 0 0.053473 degrees. So this time, once again, divide 3.34 kilometers by 0 0.053473, and you get a ratio of 62.46 kilometers degree. So I guess you can agree that that is shorter, less kilometers per degree in the east-west direction than the north-south direction. Yet if you do this exact same thing near the equator, you'll get almost exactly the same value each. So let's try seeing Y, Del. So your latitude here is about 56 degrees north where you are, something like that. So 62.46 degrees per kilometre, divide that by the cos of 56 degrees and you get 111.68 kilometre, or almost exactly the same figure as the north-south. Okay. Now, what I had done a while back is I went to the Ushuaia Airport in southern Chile. It has two runways, one north-south and the other east-west. And doing the exact same measurements, we will see that the same thing is happening at 55 degrees south of the equator as is happening at Glasgow at 56 degrees north of the equator. The distances between the longitude lines is shorter. And not just shorter, but it's shorter by a factor equal to the cos of the latitude. Well, that's starting to look rather spherical to me, mate. Now, your next move will be to say that the GPS distances are wrong. But you can easily confirm those, can't you? They will be right. We're all sure of that. So that leaves only the other measurement for you to try and cast doubt upon. The degrees of latitude and the degrees of longitude. Let's do the easy one first. Latitude. It's simple. On the day of the equinox, at the local noon, measure the angle to the sun. Or alternatively, this will be the maximum angle that the sun reaches on any given day. And bingo, you have your latitude. Now, longitude. Longitude also uses angles, hence degrees is the unit. Now this one you might not be able to confirm by yourself quite so easy, because it's the angular difference between where you are and Greenwich. So the difference between the time of the local noon at Greenwich and the time of the local noon where you are, you take that hour figure, divide it by 24, and multiply it by 360 degrees, and you've basically got your longitude. It's as simple as that. And if you doubt the fact that longitude is based on time, just think back to all the early navigators. They always carried a chronometer with them so that they knew exactly what the time was in Greenwich. I wonder why they needed to know that. Okay, so if you're at the equator and you watched the sun reach noon and you started a clock, you waited exactly 24 hours, the sun would be back at noon again. Yes? Well, that's cool. Now, let's say you had a friend in a city who was west of you. It was also on the equator, but was, let's say, 15 times 111 kilometers, 1,665 kilometers west of you. His noon would be one hour later than yours. They will because he's 15 degrees west of you. But also, let's work, but at your latitude there in Glasgow, to be one hour later for noon, you would need to be, let's say 15 by 111 by the cos of 56, 931 kilometers west for the sun to reach noon exactly one hour later. Hmm. And if you're at, say, the North Pole, then cos of 90 is zero, so you would need to be zero kilometres west to see the noon one hour later. Or a 24-hour sun, it's there all the time. Also, the cos of minus 90 is zero. Just saying. Dell, as you can see, it all works out. So I look forward to you addressing these measurements and how they actually show the sphericity of the globe that you are standing upon, Dell, whether you agree to it or not. Thank you very much. So I guess all that's left now, guys, is to um, ask Dell and Adam to both have a go at this. I have dropped this comment at both of these guys several times, but they're both ghosting me on this one. I wonder why. Okay. And when I tried to prove to myself that the world was a round ball, mm -hmm. I couldn't. So I think he always wants to know about these things, but he doesn't often see them because he's such a busy boy. So how about we all pop over there and let him know, because we know just how much he hates it when he misses out and say hi, and tell him where's Wally sent you. He loves that. Oh, and one more thing, Adam. Debate Wolfie.